Metroid Dread looks so good. It's a great reason to go pick up some of the originals. I wonder, they're probably not even that expensive on eBay right now. They'll come down. Yeah, they'll come down eventually, sure. I'll just wait. Well, I guess everyone keeps telling me I should play Chrono Trigger, so I guess I can go look and see how much that is these days. Maybe I could pick up... Nope, nope. I guess I'll just keep playing the demo for Balan Wonderworld. Hey there! Hey! Hold on! Don't go anywhere, please! Do you happen to feel like that last guy who doesn't want to pay a fortune to play some classic games? Well, I don't blame you! But maybe you shouldn't stop yourself from potentially playing that next great game when you could be playing it right now, legitimately, and for way less money. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and today we're going to be sharing with you a ton of different ways that you can play some hard-to-find, rare, and just generally expensive Nintendo games. Legitimately. I got all the good game deals you're gonna need right here! Right here, Masuko! You're gonna fire me for featuring an Xbox game on a Nintendo channel? This should be on Nintendo anyways! Boy, is it hot in here or is it just these deals? Now, not all of these games are available to be played on your Nintendo Switch like we'd hope. We're, we're getting there, but there's still a good majority of them that you can play on your Switch right now. But some of them, though, you are going to need some classic hardware for. So buckle up, bring your wallet if you plan on buying any games, but leave the credit card at home because you're not going to need that here. Hey, uh, can I spend my Wii points on this trip? No! Yeah. Let's start out with the game that spurred me to make this video in the first place. I was at a garage sale pretty recently and picked up a copy of Capcom Classics Mini Mix for the Game Boy Advance. And what I didn't realize until I got home is that this is actually a three pack collection of three NES games, Bionic Commando, Strider, and Mighty Final Fight. And if you know anything about Mighty Final Fight, you'll know that it released really, really late in the NES's life, making it pretty hard to find because they didn't make a lot of copies. And on the secondhand market right now, it currently sells for 300 dollars. And this Capcom Classics Mini Mix GBA game sells for a much, much more appropriate $15. And none of these games feature multiplayer either, so you're not really missing out on anything by picking up this GBA collection. So if you're a big fan of beat-em-ups and have always heard good things about Mighty Final Fight, this is an excellent way to give it a shot. Now, basically everybody and their mother wants Earthbound and Super Mario RPG to come to the Nintendo Switch online service. And it's a real bummer that it still hasn't. I'm, I'm hoping Nintendo has some plans to release them at some point, maybe as a celebration, who knows, we'll see. But because they haven't, there are still tons of people out there that want to play these games and just don't have an easy way to do it. Now you can pick up both of them on the 3DS and the Wii U Virtual Console for $10 a piece, and you can play them with save states. It's an excellent way. I completed Earthbound through the 3DS's virtual console, and I use save states like crazy, and I'm not ashamed for it. There are a lot of unfair deaths in that game. But another way that you can play these great games is through the SNES Classic. And you can also play Final Fantasy 3, or rather 6, and Secret of Mana as well. Now, if you wanted to go and hunt down a physical, original Super Nintendo cartridge of some of these games, Earthbound is going to set you back about $300 at the time of recording this video. Super Mario RPG is around $80, Final Fantasy 3 is $60, and Secret of Mana is $50. And you can get a Super NES Classic online for around $100. And it comes with two controllers, all the cables that you need, and tons of other games games as well. So yes, it is a much higher price point than just buying a digital game online, but, but you get so much more bang for your buck out of this system. It has save states and screen filters, and you actually get to play with a real Super Nintendo controller, one that might feel a bit more robust and textured than you may remember, but it's still an official SNES controller nonetheless. After the announcement of Metroid Dread at E3, it felt like every Nintendo fan, even ones who hadn't played the series before, had been trying to dig up copies and find Metroid Fusion, Metroid Zero Mission, Super Metroid, any, any Metroid game they could to try and experience the series. A lot of people are just really excited for Dread right now. And this in turn has caused the prices of these games to skyrocket. Metroid Fusion is currently sitting around $75 for a physical copy, and Zero Mission is going for around $100. But did you know that you can actually download both of these games on the Wii U Virtual Console for $8 a piece? Yes, another reason to finally pull out your Wii U. Can you do that on the Switch? Nope. And lots of people, including me, really, really want to play through the Metroid Prime Trilogy. 
And even though it's not on Switch and would run you around $100 to get a physical copy these days, you can actually play it through the Wii U Virtual Console for about 20 bucks. The trilogy was already a steal when it released at 50 bucks on the Wii. $20 for three games? Woof. Animal Crossing on the GameCube is also another great way to play some classic NES games. You can play The Legend of Zelda, Super Mario Bros, some of which you'll actually need a cheat device or an action replay or something like that. Back in the day, I used this Ultimate Codes disc to play some of the original NES games. But what I didn't realize back in the day when I played them, or you know, maybe time has just made them more expensive, but Clue Clue Land and Donkey Kong Jr. Math are pretty rare. Now, an actual physical copy of Animal Crossing on the GameCube will set you back about 50 50 bucks these days, but Clue Clue Land itself on the NES sells for about $50, and Donkey Kong Jr. Math? Don't even get me started. That's $150 for a physical copy. What? Now, if we're talking about collections, Kirby's Dream Collection, Special Edition as it's known on the Wii, is also a great place to play some of the best Kirby games. This collection comes with Kirby's Dream Land, Kirby's Adventure, Dream Land 2, Kirby Superstar, Kirby 64, The Crystal Shards, and most importantly, Kirby's Dream Land 3, which for a physical copy these days of the Super Nintendo version will run you $130, or you can just buy this collection for around 50 bucks online. Now let's talk about Chrono Trigger. Obviously it was gonna come up because I brought it up at the beginning of the video, so here's what I got. Well, unfortunately it's not on the SNES Classic, it's not available on the Wii U Virtual Console, 3DS, or Switch. The game did re-release on the DS way back in the day, and for a while it was affordable, but not really anymore. Right now, for a loose copy, just the cartridge, you can get it for about $70 online, where a physical copy of the Super Nintendo version sells for around $200. That's just not realistic. It's not fair. The only reason I happen to have a copy is because I bought it a long time ago and I pieced all of the different parts together and bought the box, manual, everything separate. So I just happened to get lucky. And if you don't want to throw that chunk of money at a copy like that, you can actually get it through the Final Fantasy Chronicles collection on the PS1. This includes Final Fantasy 4, which is by far my absolute favorite Final Fantasy game. If you've never played it, please give it a chance. And it also comes with Chrono Trigger. Now it does suffer from some load times, which are kind of a bummer, but it's still a fair way to play the game. Now you can get this digitally on the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation Vita for less than 10 bucks, or you can pick up a physical copy for around $20-$25. And then there's also the Steam version, which is available for 15 bucks. This version did suffer from some pretty rough graphics. Originally, they smoothed everything out, but they released a bunch of updates. And from what I've heard, it runs a lot, lot better, way more true to the original vision. Hopefully it comes to Switch eventually, but at the moment, Steam and PlayStation 3, uh, I'm looking at you. A fun fact is if you happen to have a physical copy of Final Fantasy Chronicles on PlayStation 1, if you have any PlayStation 3, you can also actually play it right on there. Not many people seem to know that since Sony didn't advertise the PS1 backwards compatibility, but every PS3 can play PS1 games. If you've got one and you don't believe me, just go give it a shot. It would be so nice if we lived in a world where we could play Banjo-Kazooie, Perfect Dark, and Conker's Bad Fur Day on a modern Nintendo system but we don't. Thankfully, the original Banjo games on N64 still hover around 30 bucks a piece, Perfect Dark's around 15, but Conker's Bad Fur Day is consistently selling for around $100 for a physical copy. But then, thankfully, Microsoft finally decided to do something with all of the rare IPs that they own, and they released the Rare Replay Collection on the Xbox One, which is also playable on the Xbox Series X. This includes 30 games from Rare's back catalog, including all of the games that I already mentioned, plus a ton more like Battletoads, Viva Pinata, there's tons of great games on here. And physically, you can very often find it in the wild or online for around 10 bucks, or if you're a digital person, you can get it for about 30. And not only is that more appetizing, all of the games were optimized to run a lot better on the Xbox. One of my absolute favorite games from the Wii era is Silent Hill Shattered Memories. This is a remake of the original Silent Hill, but it's been given a new twist. Everything's way more icy, as you can kind of tell from the cover. Now, I'm assuming that this is because most of the other Silent Hill mainline games are available on the PlayStation 2 and collectors are crazy and love consistency. I am one of them. But for some reason, Silent Hill Shattered Memories on PlayStation 2 sells for about $275. <laughs> Why? 
whereas the Wii version you can get for around 70. And in my opinion, the Wii version is way better. It utilized the speaker in the Wii remote. You can actually hear phone calls that would normally come through the TV screen. And the motion controls that you have to use when you're running away from enemies up the scare factor. At least it did for me. Now, $70 is still nothing to laugh at by any means. But if you've ever been considering this game, it's a lot cheaper to pick this up and play it. And like I said, a lot better in my opinion on the Wii. Now we slightly touched on this before, but the 3DS eShop and Virtual Console offer a plethora of classic games and some games that are getting fairly expensive on the secondhand market. If you take a look at Yokai Watch 3, for example, that game physically is around $100, but if you happen to be someone who just wants to play it, you can still download it digitally for about $40. Another great example of this is Shantae, the original Game Boy Color version. You can get this digitally on the 3DS's Virtual Console for about five bucks and you can also get this on the switch for about 10 but if you happen to want the physical copy the original game boy color release just for a cartridge no box no manual it'll set you back around six hundred dollars Recently, or at least I guess it feels like recently, Capcom released the Mega Man Zero ZX Legacy Collection for the Switch, and it comes with Mega Man Zero 1, 2, 3, 4, ZX, and ZX Advent. And you can get this for all around $30 digitally or physically. And if you wanted to buy all those games separately in their original format physically, it would cost you around $115. This was a great move by Capcom, putting all six of these games in one package. But then they did a weird thing, and then they went and released the Mega Man X Legacy Collection and the X2 Legacy Collection, and they actually split up the games into two different packages. If you bought it physically, you got them all. Well, I think half of them were on a cartridge and then half of them were on a download code. It was really weird. But if you happen to only want to play half of the games, you can just buy one of the collections on the eShop instead, instead of having to fork over the money for both. And as you'd expect, the first Legacy Collection comes with Mega Man X, X2, X3, and X4. And if you wanted to get just the Super Nintendo games, which is 1, 2, and 3, it'll cost you around $450 to get them physically, or you can just get this digitally for 20 bucks. The value here isn't nearly as good as it was back in the day on the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube where they included Mega Man X 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and I think there were some extra bonus things hidden in there as well, but you can find those for fairly cheap if you're looking. Street Fighter Third Strike may have never released on a Nintendo platform in the past. In the US at least, it physically only came to Dreamcast to my knowledge. And on that console, physical copies still sell for around $120. But if you're looking to play it on a Nintendo console, you can actually get it through the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection for about 20 bucks physically or $30 digitally. And it comes with a ton of other Street Fighter games as well. So realistically, if you do the math, there's 12 games in the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. And if you pay about 20 bucks for it, that's around $1.50 a game. And that's a pretty good value, even considering that five of those games are Street Street Fighter 2. So what? I'd pay a buck 50 to play Street Fighter 2 in arcade right now. I call Cammy. Give her. Give her to me. And speaking of arcades, if you're a fan of beat-em-ups, Capcom is on a roll. They also released the Capcom beat-em-up bundle. Now this, in the US at least, only released digitally for 20 bucks. And it comes with Captain Commando, King of Dragons, and Knights of the Round, plus I think three more games. And now if you were to buy all of those games physically in arcades, the, the arcade boards, it would cost you so much money. But what I want to compare to is the Super Nintendo versions of those games. Captain Commando goes for around 100 115, King of Dragons is around 100, and Knights of the Round on Super Nintendo is around 110, and that's just for the physical cartridges as well, not the box and the manual still either. So for 20 bucks, that goes a long way, and all of these games are co-op. So if you split it with a friend, that's only $10. Now, if you happen to be a fan of the Mana series and you don't have an SNES Classic or another way to play Secret of Mana, you can also get the Collection of Mana, which released physically in the US. It's also available on the eShop too. This collection includes Final Fantasy Adventure, which was the North American title for the first Mana game, Secret of Mana, and then Trials of Mana, which was originally known as Seiken Densetsu 3 and was never released in the West until this Collection of Mana. Now you can get this digitally for about 40 bucks on the US eShop, or if you hunt down a physical copy online, you can find one for around 20 bucks these days. And for that price, it's a steal. It's a great chunk of games to add to your collection. 
Now, last but not least is one that I feel like we have to mention. Now, I know not everybody is over the moon about the offerings that Nintendo has given us through the NES and the Super NES Nintendo Switch Online apps, but there's no denying that some of these games, some of the weird ones, are fairly expensive to buy in the secondhand market now. Now, if we take a look at the NES app, all of these games are available in there for just merely the price of Nintendo Switch Online service, which for one individual person is $20 for the entire year so you get access to all these games just like a Netflix style subscription. You can play Fire and Ice, which runs around $200. Shadow of the Ninja is $70. Vice Project Doom, $50. Clue Clue Land, which we talked about in Animal Crossing, is $50. And Scat runs around $175. So if you're someone who just wants to be able to play some of these games or wants to check them out before potentially going out and paying the money for physical copies, this is a great way to experience them. And now the Super Nintendo's offerings get to be a bit more rich in my opinion. You have access to Super Valius 4, which runs about $65, Wild Guns, which is around $200, Demon's Crest, which goes for about $150, Kirby's Dream Land 3, which we talked about earlier, is about $130, Super Metroid, which is one of the best ways to play that game, runs around $70 for a physical cartridge, and Breath of Fire 2, which is about $85. Now with Breath of Fire 2, you could just go out and get a Game Boy Advance copy for about 25 but still point being the nintendo switch online apps for super nintendo and nes offer some pretty good value even if they don't give us all of the games we actually want to play and there you have it about uh 20 maybe 20 uh, 50 70 80 100 different games lots of different ways that you can play tons of rare and expensive games on your current hardware on some retro hardware on in tons of different methods I just want you to be able to play good games that are expensive because they shouldn't be locked behind gates. You know, we should have a library where people can go and rent rare, where you can go and rent Panzer Dragoon Saga. You shouldn't have to pay $600 to be able to play that game. Feel free to let us know in the comments down below if you're planning on taking advantage of any of these methods. Let us know if you're gonna whip out that copy of Animal Crossing that you got and you're gonna you're gonna cheat it up and you're gonna download some NES games when you get home. Let us know. Maybe you're gonna go bust out your SNES classic and start some Earthbound tonight. And I hope you do. Let us know in the comments down below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, then why don't you go ahead and open up a window in your studio, drink a bunch of water, maybe get an air conditioning unit. I don't know. Take uh, take your jacket off. Uh, don't don't layer up for a video like this. It's it's ridiculous. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you next time. Oh. If you came here looking for deals, well boy, you came to the wrong place because all I got is Xbox. Keep it down. I'm going to Target. Do you want anything? Can you see if they have any copies of WarioWare on 3DS for me?